Thank you for listening. I am Mike Strauss, a.k.a. Strauss 21, with Chicago's number one underground comedian, Apollo Taj Mahal. We appreciate it, guys. If you like the interview, and I know you will, be sure to go ahead and listen to the full episode. You can find it on our website, didyousseethatshit.com, YouTube, iTunes, Stitcher, Google Play, pretty much wherever you find your favorite podcast. Be sure to listen to the whole episode. We appreciate it very much, guys. Right now, I want to welcome UFC lightweight Tony Martin. He has a big fight coming up at Fight Night Atlantic City, April 21st. He's looking to get back on track against a very tough Nakamura. What's going on, man? Hey, how's it going? Uh, yeah, no, I'm, I'm, I'm excited. I'm actually moving up to welterweight for this fight. Oh, you are? Okay. Uh, yeah, so I'm going to make uh, the transition up, and I'm going to think that uh, my performances should, you know, I think they should get a lot better with me moving up in weight class. If you don't mind me asking, man, how much weight did you cut at lightweight? Well, so the issue was, is, you know, if I after I cut down to lightweight, I balloon up because, like, my body just returns absolutely everything. Mm-hmm. So I, get, I can get up to, like, 205 pounds, I guess. But if I give my body like six months to come back to normal, I normally walk in like 86, 87. But the last fight I fought before that, obviously, I fought uh, Johnny Case. And then I took the DOC called me. They asked me if I wanted to fight on three weeks' notice. I said, absolutely not. There's no way I can make weight. And then they called me, you know, two days later saying, all right, can you fight on five weeks' notice? And that was the fight with uh, Olivier uh, Mercer. And I was like, you know, I liked the matchup. Obviously, I was 195 pounds, so uh, five weeks out, I was 195 pounds. So I had to cut, you know, 40 pounds, and it was just, oh, uh, I still feel like I have nightmares <laughs> about uh, the weight that fight. So I, uh, you know, talked to my camp. You know, I moved out to ATT uh, down in Florida now, and we discussed, you know, like, do I want to stay at 55? Do I want to stay at 70? Um, so then I told the UFC I want to move up to 70 and of course they come back offer me a pretty good fight at 155 <laughs> yeah so they offered me to fight Jim Miller and uh, I was pretty excited about it because I haven't fought a vet like that you know he's had you know over 20 25 UFC fights or something like that so oh, yeah. I was like you know I may take this fight just out of principle alone so Mike Brown uh, I told Mike Brown at HT about it because I already told the UFC I'll take the fight you know because I like the fight and he, he called my manager and was like, listen, Tony's fighting at 170. So, here, I'm fighting at 170 now versus Nakamura. And I'm pretty excited about it. I feel great. I think the move to 170, man, I think that's going to be good for you. I think uh, you're seeing more and more guys kind of shy away from that. You see the success of guys like uh, Dos Sanos. You know, look what he's been able to do. I think that's the right move for you. I think the road to a championship is a little bit easier for you. In the welterweight division, I mean, there's still killers there. Uh, right. the lightweight's a little different. I wanted to ask you, you know, you brought the ATT up. I saw that you had moved down there. That's something I wanted to talk to you about because ATT, probably one of the handful of, you know, best gyms in the world, right? So how have they been able to right. take you to that next level? Honestly, so far, I feel like, you know, my my biggest hole is just strict wrestling. You know, I feel like uh, my chain wrestling and all that. I mean, I'm a good grappler, obviously. You know, I feel like I'm a high-level grappler. But I feel like that chain wrestling is what is a big game I'm missing. And, and out here, this, all they do every day is wrestle. So I've already wrestled more since I've been here than I've wrestled in the last three and a half years. Wow. Um, so I think just the wrestling alone is going to be a huge impact. And obviously, I also moved out of here because I, I knew I needed the best bodies in the world, the best fighters in the world. And that's what they have an abundance of. So every day, you're in there with the top fighters in the world, which is uh, big because, you know, now the things that, that work, you know that they work before you go into fights. Or, you know, I feel like at the smaller gyms that I've been at, you you know, you can kind of, a lot of the guys, you just do whatever you want in a way and get away with obviously using bad technique or things that might work, but you get in the fight and it doesn't work. But, you know, down in the ADT, if it doesn't work in training, you know, don't expect it to work in the fight. It's kind of a, that part's big. Obviously, the coaches, you know, we're still building rapport with each other. And, you know, I've been, you know, trying to work every day, 
two, three times a day with them. So, uh, it, it, so far, I'm loving it. Uh, I'm having a blast out here. I think that, you know, the training is great. Uh, I'm pretty excited to see how the future unfolds with me being out there. You know, I was taking a look, man, uh, back through some of your fights and the Felipe Novar fight, man, in uh, January of 2013. I felt like that was like a, a turning point for you. What do you feel was like the, the fight where you felt like you first put it all together? I, I think it was the, um, yeah, the Felipe Oliveri fight. Mm-hmm. Um, I think it was the Felipe Oliveri fight is when I felt like, you know, I was able to mix in. My, I tried to wrestle right away. That didn't work. And then I went back to all my striking and I started landing really good combos. And then obviously I got into where, you know, he thought I was just going to be striking. And I got back into my grappling. And then I finished that fight in that way. So I think the uh, Felipe Oliveri fight was the uh, biggest one. And then obviously he also popped up for steroids at that fight. So that was also, a, you know, a nice little pound of fire. The steroid thing just doesn't uh, doesn't sit well with me. I'm sure it doesn't sit well with you and all the other people that are that are clean in the sport, man. There's, you know, USADA is a really good thing. I, I mean, I hear from a lot of guys though that it's super invasive. Where do you kind of fall on that? No, I mean, I, I, I feel obviously I'd like people to get tested more often. Even, I, I, you know, as long as you're not cheating, I don't, I don't see any fault in it. But you know, obviously sometimes it could be inconvenient. Uh, sometimes it's tough to, you know, you forget that. Oh, I got to tell you, Sada, that I'm going out to Vegas or I'm going here, and that part gets a little annoying. But you know, the only thing, obviously, you know, is just we had no choice. You know, it was kind of a thing that they just implemented and. You had no choice in the factor. And uh, so that part is the thing where, you, you know, you always want the fighters to have a, a choice, have an opinion. But I'd say most fighters are probably happy with having USADA. I mean, it definitely helps even the playing field and help, you know, regulate the sport more. But I, I like USADA. I, mean, I, I think it's good for the sport. I think, you know, there's a lot of stuff going on out there that I feel like there was a lot of cheating in the sport. And hopefully, you know, they're helping clean it all up. Yeah, I definitely think uh, it's a step in the right direction. We've, uh, not to name any names, but we've all kind of seen certain people who pre-USADA were kicking ass and kind of post-USADA, well, you know, they're just, <laughs> you know, they're not the same, right? Uh, uh, you've seen some major fall-offs, yeah, that's for sure. Yeah, more than just a couple. I was looking through your Instagram, I was kind of creeping on your Instagram the other day, man, and uh, <laughs> you post a ton of quotes. What is one of your more favorite inspirational quotes out there? I was just watching Any Given Sunday. It's a good movie. And, you know, and I was watching, listening to his quote about, you know, how every inch in life matters. So that was kind of a, that, that was the first thing that when you said that popped into my brain was, you know, just inch by inch, you know, everything happens. So you can't cut corners. And that's what I just like is if there is no cutting corners. And, and that's kind of life in general is just, you know, you got to keep clawing inch by inch. And whoever fights the hardest for that inch is going to win. So that's probably one of my favorite quotes, I think. Yes, sir. A very underrated movie too. I feel like uh, I feel like that movie doesn't get the respect it deserves. You know, like uh, among the the really good movies. You're pretty active on Instagram. Do you want to let everybody know where they could follow you at? Yeah, you can follow me at T Martin MMA. That's my Twitter, Instagram, and then uh, you can follow me at Tony Martin MMA on uh, Facebook. And you know, I, I still gotta get a little better with my social media, but. Uh, I'm trying to work on it. I get harassed daily by people, for, but hopefully <laughs> it gets better. <laughs> <laughs> we all do. We all do. It's it, man. It's people don't realize this shit's time consuming. It really is, man. You get yeah. I don't like it. to preach the same stuff, or I, I don't know. I feel like you know some. I, I think some crazy thoughts sometimes. So I'm just like, you know, maybe it's better off just <laughs> <laughs> posting on social media. So. well it's definitely a good thing to have that filter Uh, before I let you go man we kind of have a little tradition here could you say this is Tony Martin and you're listening to the did you see that shit podcast this is Tony Martin and you're listening to did you see that shit podcast that's it